<coughs> oh, whoops. Hehe. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, this is gonna be my response to, whoops, to Christian Cemetery when faith becomes death by Brett Keane. Isn't it funny that you just blame me in your in one of your videos um, with the one with my name in the title uh, that you can't have a debate with me because I would never change my view and now you're saying that you could never ever come back to Christianity? That's funny. Um, and anyways, I explained that a de debate is not whether you can change somebody's views or not, it's defending, uh, that's the ultimate objective, whether you do or not, but rather it's defending your views in light of scrutiny. And um, a discussion would be one where somebody is willing to open their views and, and share them and, and shape, reshape them, maybe chisel out parts and work with it. Polytheist belief system versions of God, if... Yahweh came out of the clouds right now, and I'm actually... Okay, let me give, um, I'll say four solid points to why I believe that the Christian faith, the God of the Christian faith, is true and the right God. The first one would be that God is the best explanation for the origin of the universe. Um, given all the best objections I've heard from atheists, um, it still stands, and I I'm willing to defend that point if anybody wants to argue any aspects to it. Um, God is the best explanation for objective moral values, that there is really um, right and wrong, uh, and it's not subjective. Um, that God is the best explanation for biblical prophecy about events conspire that, uh, that came about in the future. Now, one could say, well, perhaps somebody read these prophecies and then decided to, you know, make Israel a nation born in a day. Well, you know, do you ever judge any other situations like that would, I guess, be my answer to that. And there's a lot more prophecies where it would seem to get, be against what the norm of things were. Likewise, did anybody think after going through a Holocaust that they would ever have a nation? Uh, you know, it's, it's a really a jump you have to take. Um, and the fourth point would be the unsurpassing moral teachings of Christ that even up until today, no spiritual or leader or teacher has ever surpassed his teachings. And none of them have either, uh, have kept them the way that Christ kept his teachings. And, um, even saying unto those who killed him, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Um, now that's not to say that Jesus also didn't have righteous judgment. Those who knew better, yet still did wrong, i.e. the hypocrites, he judged them harshly. But those who didn't know what they were doing wrong, yet still did evil against him, he forgave. And really, ultimately, this is, we, this is the righteous decree and judgments we find from God. And so if you can tear down all four of these points and then build up four points better... Um, where each one is, then I, I believe you, you would make victory and show that I'm wrong. But until you do that, I'm certainly within logical justification for my belief. Especially looking at the sky, and I were to see some kind of proof or evidence, I would believe in it, but I would never follow Christianity. And the reason why I would, ladies and gentlemen, is because Christianity isn't about a God. It isn't about Jesus. It's a goddamn wolf pack mentality. It's a club where people go to show off their new clothing and their favorite earrings and shit and act all pompous and self-righteous. Well, anybody who does that is not following the te teachings of Christ, and this is really uh, whatever church you've been to or wherever you've seen that, 
I would avoid going there. You, it would be really not right to keep going there. Um, Christ said that what you do to the least of my brothers you have done unto me. So anybody who's in there with some sort of self-righteous, pious mentality really has missed the point of Christ's teachings. And really, I think um, more thought and more prayerful efforts need to be put into looking for a church. And that this is definitely not something uh, you should jump into. And um, my video, I believe it's What About Do Denominations, I do uh, go a bit more in depth with that. Christianity reminds me of the story about the Pharisees in the Bible. That's what they remind me of. So here's what you need to do. You, if, if each church represents a different Pharisee, you need to find the Nicodemus Pharisee and get into that one. Um, the one who is willing to open themselves up and, and learn and submit to the teachings of Christ and not let their own bias um, tell them what the scriptures mean. And so you need to find a biblical church, um, one that lays a foundation upon the teachings of Christ. group who believes that they're above the law and they're above everybody else and they just think that their shit don't stink and as you know the pharisees killed their own god according to the story so why the fuck would i want to be a part of something like that if i were to get evidence of a god i would surely believe in it i would accept it and everything and i'd be fine with it if it turned out to be particular gods though i wouldn't be pleased like if it turned out to be yahweh i'd be pissed a god of logical thinking a god who is irrational who kills and murders its own fucking human pets okay first of all in the scripture the relationship between god and humans is of a loving father to children so to say that we are pets of god you've really misunderstand misunderstood basic um, biblical doctrine. Um, in Islam, however, uh, if you ask a Muslim, what is the purpose? Why are we created? They will say that we are slaves to Allah. <clears throat> Even the most liberal uh, thinking Muslims uh, do say that because it's I, um, a, a big part of their teaching. So with that respect, you would be right. Now, here's the thing. God didn't just go and kill people for the sake of killing them because they went against him. And it's the uh, the isolation of these accounts in the Old Testament that makes them so strange. I mean, when we look, God loved the heathen and he loved Nineveh and he sent a prophet to speak to them, uh, who, which was Jonah. And when we look at his judgment upon the Canaanite people, if you go back into Genesis, the God, God keeps his children an extra 400 years in Egypt as slaves because the people who sold them into slavery to Egypt, their sins did not fully reach its peak. In other words, he had to watch his own children suffer because the, his enemies were not ready for judgment. And that is his righteousness. And that he couldn't just judge them yet because they did not get so wicked that he could just utterly destroy them as he did. And we re read in the Levitical laws what they did, why it was so wicked that they fell upon that judgment from God, but there's absolute, you know, there's absolutely no um, stories in the Scripture where God just arbitrarily starts killing people. There's always um, a reason behind it, so lesser evil would be brought about in the world. A good um, parable about God's loving mercies would be the the prodigal son. I would be totally unhappy, but I would accept it. I don't know. I think that if I were to if I were to actually make myself believe in something, if that's even possible, I would probably convince myself to believe in Hercules. Hercules. Well, what you've just done is you've broken the commandment to not make engraven images and not make an idol in your mind out of God. You are breaking the commandments of a righteous God to make something <clears throat> that fits you. But that's not what it's about. You need We either accept God for who he is, or that's it. So you wouldn't really believe in him, even if he gave you a sign. You would 
get the sign, and then you would go back and make up a god that would fit that sign that you received. And this would ha this is what happened to the children of Israel as well. They got signs from God when they were being brought out of Egypt, and they got signs and and was a ac was accompanying them, but they still didn't believe. So to go and say, well, if I see a sign and I get evidence in that way, you would believe. Well, you just admitted yourself that actually you wouldn't. And you would be angry if if it turned out to be this particular God because it does it doesn't fit for you who you want God to be.